We could choose. All right, so let's talk about the Ayn Rand bot. Yes. Yeah, so uh, if people don't know the story of the Ayn Rand bot, it's been around, I think, since around 2011. And I was on Twitter and saw somebody had an account, TSL a bot. And I thought, oh, how cute. And so I went ahead and see, you know, I saw if the handle Ayn Rand bot was available and it was. So of course I grabbed it and I started just sending out quotations because that's what the TSL bot did was quotations from T.S. Eliot. And I was just kind of live tweeting those every so often. And I thought, okay, I want this automated. I don't want to sit there all day tweeting. And so I figured out, I found a service that you can use, you know, you could, uh, put up, you know, together a database of quotations and upload them every so often and schedule them and everything. So I figured out how to do that. And I've been doing it for years and it's got, you know, 22,000 followers. It's respectable, right? I've never boosted it. I've never done anything. I don't have resources. You know, I just have continuously sent out these tweets. And then eventually I created a presence for it on Facebook. So I made a Facebook page and just called it Ayn Rand Bot. And so you can find it at Facebook forward slash Ayn Rand Bot. Uh, by the way, you can go to the my program notes at don'tletitgo.com and you'll see a link to the Facebook page and then also some information about the taking down of the page. Anyway, so, you know, in terms of the Facebook page, I haven't been able to get it to consistently sync with Twitter, where if the tweet happens that it automatically goes to Facebook. So I've had to myself choose some quotation off of whatever is most recent in Twitter, or maybe if there's another quotation I want to put, I'll go post it on the Facebook page. And then uh, recently I, w I go went there, it was early last week, and I get this notice, and you again, you can see it on my blog at don'tletitgo.com. You can see the sort of thing that I saw. And it says... Your page has been unpublished, right? And actually, let me go ahead and read you the language that they give me. Because when something like this happens from Facebook, you don't know exactly why yep. you've been unpublished or your post has been taken down or whatever. They give you some very broad language. So it says, it looks like recent activity on your page doesn't follow the Facebook page policies regarding impersonation and pretending to be an individual or business. Oh. Visit the Help Center for more information, blah, blah, blah. You appealed this decision Tuesday, July 16, 2019 at 1.42 p.m. Uh, my appeal was very brief and succinct. It, it said that, first of all, I tell exactly, you know, What's people fine? exactly what it is, that it's just quotations out there that it's curated by me, right? I put my name on it. And at the same time, it's called Ayn Rand Bot and Ayn Rand has been dead for decades. So how in the world could anyone think that this page is impersonating Ayn Rand, right? Yep. Yep. That's all I know. I mean, I don't, again, I don't know you know, who the, reported it or the, why. The schools might have complained about you. Oh, you, oh, the buzzards. Yeah. Yeah. The buzzards might have complained. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple theories, right? So it could be that it could be somebody else who I've made upset for whatever reason. And I make a lot of people upset because I actually criticize Donald Trump, you know, um, bad Amy, bad baby. I know. I know. Yeah. So, you know, I made somebody upset and so they went ahead and, oh, and by the way, so there was on one of the recent posts, there was one that I had taken a screen grab from Twitter because I've got the Twitter account, right? And there was this, it was this time where Trump was again, sort of threatening to go after the social media companies and in particular Twitter for something, right? Because they're censoring conservatives. You know how this is going on. And I just took an actual just quotation from Ayn Rand that was essentially an answer to what Trump had tweeted. Um, if you thought about it, you know, but I didn't add anything to it. It was just a quote and it was just put in juxtaposition to this tweet from Trump basically saying, you know, no, you don't have the right to take over social media companies and have them bake your cake, Trump, right? So um, it could have been that one, right? It could have been that one that buzzards or whoever reported, it doesn't matter. Um, but the point is, is that nobody could conceivably take that page as imitating Ayn Rand or is speaking for her in any official way. And the one post where it was like 
potentially saying something substantive and, you know, in the direction of making a commentary, it was defending social media, right? So it, it's pro Facebook as much as it's pro Twitter or anybody else, right? So that, that's the context, but nonetheless, somehow it got unpublished. And as far as I know, from one report, because there wasn't any warning, there wasn't any, oh, well, we're taking down this one post because this one post was in violation. I mean, it's never run afoul of anything before. It's never had anything happen. And then suddenly the whole page is unpublished. So it was ridiculous. So I appealed, like I said. And then I just- Appealing easy or was it, it was easy to find the appeal button or whatever? Yeah, so right there, they tell you, you know, you go ahead and you fill out this thing. I should have taken a screen grab of that too, but I did not. Um, And of also what I wrote, but I wrote something very brief and said that, it just didn't seem reasonable for anybody to think that this was imitating anybody because the author's been dead for decades and it's quotations. And, you know, I say that it's me and everything anyway. So I appeal and, you know, wait, and I just go out there and I try to make as much noise as possible. And I decide, look, you know, this is where I'm going to draw a line in the sand that if I don't get a resolution of this, that I find satisfactory, including republishing the page, yep. then as much value as I get as a person who does meet Facebook friends and, you know, even more than that, right on Facebook. And I have these substantive interactions. I would let this go because you have to stand on principle in a certain way. And if they're going to be so arbitrary that they're going to find that this page, which is, you know, so, you know, sort of unoffensive, it's just sharing quotations from Ayn Rand. And in so far, like I said, it's making commentary, it's defending this medium against government takeover. If they're going to ban that page, then I'm out of there, right? So making noise, making noise. People saw me making noise. Your own, I don't know if you retweeted my tweet. I was kind of offended at that, but anyway. But I didn't retweet your tweet? My tweet, trying to make noise about it. I think you liked it. You know, if you like your tweets, like, oh, that's really helpful. Thanks. Um, but oh, you know, th there was, there was a tweet out there and I had tagged you and I was like, come on, retweet my tweet. I don't, I guess I don't tag you the right way. I, a lot of people, they tag you in the actual body of the tweet and then you retweet that tweet. But then I think I like CC'd you in a follow on tweet and it, I guess it just didn't do what I wanted. It's like, retweet my tweet, give me some noise. Ben Shapiro gave me some noise. He retweeted one of my tweets about it, which was beauty. Um, and then finally, six days after I appealed and was making all this noise, six days, they put the page back up. And again, if you go to the blog at don'tletitgo.com, you can see the screen grab of what I got on that day. It was just yesterday, actually, wasn't it? It seems so long. Um, that they put it back up. It says, page published. After reviewing your appeal, your page Ayn Rand bot has been published. This means it can now be viewed publicly. And I had to check and say, I have read the message above. So not only have I read it, I screen grabbed it, Facebook. Um, and then you can continue and go on and go about your business. But here's, yeah. I mean, first of all, I just want to say one thing. Facebook, you should not say your face has, your excuse me, your, um, your page has been published as if they publish it or something, right? Um, the way that I was phrasing it, because I'm looking out for Facebook's interest because I am still, I consider myself an ally of Facebook as of this moment. Um, I, I, can, I put it in this way. I said that the publication restriction on my page was lifted, right? So I'm publishing and I'm publishing by virtue of the fact that they're allowing me to use their tool for publication. I think Facebook does not want you know, in terms of this stupid law that they've been forced to, you know, kind of but characterize even the law themselves. Doesn't actually say what the, the the people are saying it says. So if you read the law, it doesn't say, it doesn't make this differentiation between the law. Actually, says that section two thirty or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep citing that section actually says that these platforms can decide what they have and have not because Republicans insisted that the platforms be allowed to discriminate so that they wouldn't be forced, for example, to have porn, pornography on it. Mm. So it's actually put in for the purpose of allowing the platforms to be able to 
say what would go on the platform or would not go on. Never was the intention that the platforms would be such that they were completely passive and everything could be posted on it. That was never the intent of the law. That's not how it's written. It's completely disingenuous of people to claim that this that they have been granted some exclusion from being a publisher. It's the opposite. They were given extra ability beyond being a to, to, just in case somebody wanted to claim that they had to publish everything. Yeah, well, that's good in any event. But I still, if I were them, I wouldn't use the word publisher. So, uh, sure. Yeah. Any, anything that makes it seem like they're the ones doing the publishing that I think they would want to avoid, but in any event. So, so that's all, that's what I know. In addition to that, um, I do know somebody within Facebook, but understandably that person who is not in the, you know, sort of community standards department doesn't know and they're not allowed to know you know exactly what it is all i know is that it was a so-called false positive that's all i know is yeah. that the it came up as a false positive that could have been as a result of a report from somebody which i think is most likely somebody reported my page to try to get me off facebook um by the way those people who themselves are um, condemnatory of Facebook for curating content at all, for having community standards at all, and then go ahead and use those community standards to get someone like me unpublished. But you don't know that somebody spoke out against you. I mean, I, I well, guess that's the most likely. I think that's the most likely thing. There's one other thing, maybe just that. Okay, well, there are a couple of things I was thinking. So I, have I, was another, th so I have a different explanation. Oh, you do? Okay, what's yours? Go ahead. I mean, my view is. The, they're trying to clean up Facebook, clean up, whatever that means, right? They're, they're trying to determine. They're not doing it by human beings because there are too many pages. There's just no way to do it. So they've written a code that screens everything and flags anything suspicious or is maybe even takes anything suspicious off. Mm. And then if you appeal, then some human being actually goes there and actually looks at the page and says, and it, this is why it takes six days, because there's probably a huge backlog of appeals. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sure. A human being to actually do it. And a human being goes there and they look, oh, this is what that is. Oh, they, they flag this wrong. And maybe, maybe the algorithm is looking for names of people who are dead because there are a lot of bots out there spreading information uh, in people's names that are not legit, you know, Russian bot type things. Maybe it's looking for offensive quotes and they picked up something that she said that's not PC or whatever. Who knows? But my guess is it's some algorithm. It's some automatic feature that, that, that took you off the page yeah. and then it took a human being to put you back on. And that explains the six days and it explains why you didn't hear anything because it's in a queue. Yeah, no, I think it's in quite a queue. And what it raises for me is, and you know, another thing, of course, there's uh, the Ayn Rand Institute page is one of those checkmark verified pages. Yeah. So it could be that any other pages are maybe looked at as suspicious if they have Ayn Rand in the name. I mean, who knows, right? I actually got permission from Leonard Peikoff to start yeah. this account, by the way, back in 2011. Well, I I've got, I got that. I never got one on Twitter, but I got it on Facebook. Years ago, I got the check mark. Oh, you got a check mark? Okay. So, but you again, yeah, you have to be verified or whatever. Who knows? Um, but that could have been part of it as well. My, yeah, so maybe, maybe that's right. Maybe there's some effort to quote clean up generally, or it could have been a report. But either way, you're right. I'm getting caught up in an algorithm that functions automatically. And either at the very beginning, it's a very low level person at Facebook who looks at it super quickly in making this decision to unpublish. And that person may be not very knowledgeable or sophisticated or even unsympathetic it could happen as well. Uh, and then you have to appeal to get out of that and you have to wait in the queue until Maybe you know, it's not what we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. 
any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.